Welcome guys, it's Glenn from Launch. Now this is part two of the series of videos I'm doing on the Pad 7 operation um, interface. And I'm traveling, at, at this training is actually based on um, new users and um, existing users and people that are looking at the Pad 7 and have a look at the functionality first. Now, have a look at the first video and then follow the series and I'll go through each of the interfaces and um, explain exactly what um, the interface will actually do and if you have is issues with operating with the vehicle or um, issues with the VCI I'll explain it through these videos. Now in this video I'm going to cover the TPMS. Now with the TPMS you need to actually have a XL31 gun, which is very similar to this. It will actually have to be linked to it. And once you enter into the software, it will automatically look for the uh, XL31 gun. Now you gotta make sure before you enter it, if it doesn't, it will try and look for the Bluetooth and, and log on. Now, going back um, to this, once you go into the TPMS area, you can actually go into the firmware fix. And this actually firmware fix fixes the um, problems if there's a problem with the actual gun itself. The vehicle coverage, you'll cover it, but you'll have to again be on the internet itself. Now, the vehicle coverage will pop up um, as a menu, and then you can enter those area to see what cover uh, vehicles that it covers themselves so you can actually see a menu but you'll have to be on the internet for this um, to, to work and as I mentioned once you go into the software itself um, you can then uh, program your TPS sen uh, sensors and also clone it so it's just a matter of going into the menu you select the vehicle uh, the series, so for instance, and then it'll give you up the menus regarding programming and learning. So if you're cloning a sensor, uh, an OEM sensor to an aftermarket sensor, you can do it with the uh, XL31 gun and the TPMS program on the Pad 7, and you just hit into learning and follow the instructions. Now this will go also with the manual entering of the system itself. So a bit of information regarding how to program those sensors to that vehicle, maybe in this area itself under the learning process. So that's a TPMS area. But again, if you have issues with the TPS gun, you can do a firmware fix or make sure the Bluetooth is being linked. If it's linked to another vehicle, you have to unlink the uh, TPMS gun to uh, the tablet, I should say, sorry, um, to that tablet, unlink it and then link it to the Pad 7 itself. I'll just exit out of this and I'll go out. I'm just returning back. Now, I mentioned earlier the diagnostic history itself. Um, we don't need to go in it. Have a look at the first video for that. Now, the service functions. Now the service functions, you again, you may have to be on the internet to do this and your subscription have to be up to date. Because um, once your subscription actually elapses, some of the service functions will be shut off. Um, you'll do your basic diagnosis, but your service functions may be restricted itself. So um, regarding the service functions, it's a shortcut and makes sure it's quicker and easier when you're doing your services. Otherwise, you can go into the local diagnosis and then enter the special functions in that way um, regarding servicing. But normally, a quick way is going through these service functions. So it's a matter of just selecting, and the Pad 7 has the most of the service functions um, listed. And it's a matter of just going in and um, entering that service function. You would then update that area go into it as long as you hook to the vehicle and if it's not supported it will tell you um, for instance 
I'll go into Ford for example on my simulator that you know I'm using turn the ignition on it will actually search for this function if it doesn't have that function it won't I won't do it or won't go into it and if you thought that it should go into it you can use the feedback to go back into it and, and, and let the headquarters know that there is an issue so again you'll get this all, all area and you can actually send a feedback if it doesn't work but most cases like this vehicle this simulation doesn't have this feature and I know that, that. so we'll go back and we'll go into the next area now as I mentioned before uh, a lot of these functions are shortcuts and you go into different areas but you must meet the criteria and especially like DPFs um, once you go into a DPF area you must make sure the engines temperatures and everything are right to meet that vehicles criteria so again um, I'm not in diesel at the moment but I can't really show you but it will enter the vehicle like normal and then it will check to see if this function is available um, on this particular vehicle and normally if it's not it'll, it'll report back that I can't find this function um, or it's not listed itself in the in the database itself so it's searching now and then again this, this vehicle that is not a diesel so um, the function can't be carried out and I'll go out of this so the next thing is it will go into is the the more I explained earlier in the last video regarding the um, if you need to purchase special software but the pad 7 usually caters for all um, most of the service functions that we do um, it might have Tesla and I think which is a special uh, vehicle application so not everybody works on the Teslas and you have to have a um, connection to the Tesla for that so that I have to be purchased separately also with commercial vehicles and so forth you will have to um, look at that later on and purchase them so regarding the more you can purchase software from this point um, so you go into packages um, and then enter that way as I mentioned before so we just go out of this now feedback feedback is one of the things that um, you need to get used to this is the feedback to development of the software and helps us uh, fix the issues if there's issues or because we haven't done the development of that vehicle we may need to know so how this works is we've got feedback every time you enter a vehicle it's actually recorded into a feedback area and then you can actually retrieve um, and make a report up and, and and send the results to us which is the headquarters itself for development so for instance if I entered Ford I will then have a, this menu pop up I can then load the last files that I want to send and then press OK and then I can nominate the issue I've got and then place in a, a, an email or phone number and what this does this will actually then um, okay and then also I can select add, add a file um, from the database itself if I need to okay so and then once I do that I submit it and then what this does it will go into the history area so you select history and you'll see the last ones that I've sent so this gives you the progress of where they are so at the moment they've just been pending and if you wanted to see the, the pending notes it'll go here and a reply will actually come back here and what they're doing in the next process and if they've done something about it or move on it's in process and then done and done usually that the software may be in the next version of software itself and download it to that version it doesn't take overnight because some problems you cannot fix overnight it has to be checked and tested and confirm that the problem is there or something else but this is the process how we get the, the data um, regarding your issue that you have on that day 
and the offer list will be also um, listed there. But that's the feedback that if you have a problem with the software or a car issue not going in by the um, VCI, you would do the feedback itself because the dealers would ask for the feedback itself. Now, the next one <clears throat> we'll cover is ADAS. ADAS itself um, is you know, a calibration you need to purchase the calibration kit, which will come with targets in the ADAS. And if you go to com, uh, passenger vehicle, you can actually look at, click on ADAS calibration, enter, and you'll need to activate it. If you don't activate it, um, you just ignore it, it will go back and you can do a quick check on it. So I'll go into here now. This is on the pad 7. It's entering the vehicle now that I've got. And it's actually going to check to see if this vehicle has LS on it. Let's go through this process. Okay, so this is the Ford that I've got, and it has a parking aid. But the module is not there because I'm not on my simulator. But again, it will actually search um, if this vehicle's got ADAS itself, and you would enter into that module and have all the fault codes and so forth regarding that. Because there's no module, um, we can't do it. So the system scan, you will see topology regarding the ADAS. So it's very similar to the diagnostic topology. It will go through and check that. You'll have a list if you need to do the list and enter at that point. And you can see if it's equipped or not equipped. The health reports, you can actually then scan through um, and start the report scan. So on my simulator, because I don't have all ADAS, it should come not equipped to any of these and then equipped um, show up by a fault so you can actually see there's a fault in the instruments so it's actually doing a scan on each of the modules um, and give you a report so you, again it's another way of doing the fault codes themselves and then you'll do your report like normal and it'll be a prior report or post report or scan report um, regarding that and it'll come up like normal so we go into it and you see it's like a normal report so I'll go back on this exit and I'll catch you in the next video